still be sore. Up on the warm-up lap now. When we look back here, Barry, just uh, while the bikes are warming up, the lap record for the 500s in 1992 from Michael Doohan on a Honda was 131.411, and that speed there was 154.773 kilometres. Now we look at the pole time here, and 135.80 with a, with a speed of 156.193. Yeah, the reason for that is, Daz, is because the circuit is uh, not in anywhere near as good a condition as it was because of the drag strip, basically. Um, and that's all there is to it. That's, that's the up and the down, the truth of it. Winners over the years here, as we look at the uh, the rows for you, so that's the front row doing BD Cattle or Arbe. Winners here in 91 on a Yamaha was Wayne Rainey, and 92 was McDoon on a Honda. 93, Kevin Swan, Suzuki. 1994, that ride by John Kaczynski on a Kajiva, not here uh, this time round. And uh, Wayne Rainey, of course, now in the capacity here as team manager. So it's been quite a lineup. Rainey doing Swamps, Kaczynski, and I've got to say, I'm sorry that Kaczynski's not here this time round. Well, it's a pity, really, you know, but um, basically he's, he's got himself to thank for that because he, he really alienated so many people that. Um, like Kajiba, as an example, they looked after him like a little god. And uh, the last race, he said, well, you know, they could have put more effort in, which was rubbish. There's a guy in this, this guy here, 24. I've never seen anybody so big on a motorbike in my life. And in all honesty, Dazza, if you threw a set of leathers on, I'd lay money, you'd go around as quick as this bloke. Look at the size of the bloke. He looks um, like a condom for well, peanuts. Well, he can't be fit. He cannot be fit. I'm glad I didn't say that. Um, he can't be fit. He's enormous. I mean, look at the size of the bloke. I've got, you know, it's just wrong. You, you, this is, they need to really look at this because some of these guys, this Mick, I, was, I couldn't believe it. He got in the way of Mick and so badly in the way. And he said, you just have a look. You've never seen anybody so big in your life. Riding around him would be like riding around the block. <sighs> we shouldn't say. Well, it's true. You know, that's it. You know, there's nothing wrong with people that, with the, big or small or whatever, but they, he shouldn't be riding a Grand Prix bike. All right, let's come back for the start of this one. Mick Doohan, Darrell Beattie, the two Australians. Catalora moves in. That's Arbe up on the front row there, and he is really, really quick. Whether he can go the distance, only time will tell, but he's getting more experienced every time he goes around. Well, we've got to look at in this. You've got two Yamahas on the front row on Dunlops. The Dunlops go a lot quicker from the start. He's up a lot quicker, so let's have a Set look. Set for a start. Racing now. Away they go. Oh, Mick Doohan with the bullets. The Swans. Swans. Swans, is, Swans is way at the back. You'll see him coming on the bottom of the right. That was Schwan He just got left on the line. It's Mick. So, bad start there, but Mick Doohan, straight away he goes out. Arbe comes in behind him. Bit of a shake and a wriggle on the cold tyres now. Big challenge coming up from Arbe. Word, yeah. Oh, tourist route. You know, you have to be so careful on the, the first couple of laps on the 500 because the tyres, they need to be really hard to work around here, you know, for a long distance. And you've got to go as quick as you can, obviously. But it's a fine knife edge, you know, to get the temperature into the tyres because you're going to end up laying on your ears so easily. Catalore up into third, third place. Darrell Beattie got left a little bit on the start. He's up into fourth for challenging now. All over uh, on the inside there of Catalora, Arbe doing a terrific job. We told you, this kid is a flyer, 19 years of age, sticking to doing like mud to a, a wet blanket at the moment. Won't go away. The, Kevin Swans, way back. Yeah, I can't, can't even see him. Come there, Swans there. Yeah, I don't know what he did. It looked like it may have jumped out of gear or something on the start line, but it was obviously a major problem. And then, Basically, he's ruined the race for Kevin. What Daryl Beach has got to do in fourth place there, he's got to get past um, Cadillac and Abbey, because if he lets go of Mick, Mick is um, capable of doing a runner. And yeah. sorry, and Beatty can put quicker laps together consistently, more consistently than Cadillac or Abbey. So here they go down the main straight now. McDoohan's on to blast his way down. Arby to try to uh, stick with him there. The new find with the Kenny Roberts team. We first saw him in Suzuka in Japan where he led that race for some time. Buried in the sand trap. But we know how quick he is. That shot there gives you an idea how quick they're going. Doing Abe Catalora, BD Caparossi. Yes, that's right. He's on a 500 this time round. Uh, look at Abe. The Abe is just sliding that thing in quite incredible Schwantz is down at 15th now unbelievable Kevin Swantz the last time we'll see him in this country on two wheels 
So he'd be really disappointed. But he's a fighter. He'll come back. Let's stick with the action here at the moment. Look at the Avi's style. Just watch his elbows. Watch, look, elbows out. Just a real typical kind of motocross guy. And you watch some of the action that he gives the bike. Gets it sideways and throws him out of the seat. Doesn't phase him at all. I mean, he's quite exceptional. He had an enormous slide at the end of the straight going to the left-hander yesterday and got it all together at a massive speed. Uh, in excess of like 180 kilometers an hour. He just got it sideways and flicked it back. Just having a look. Beatty was looking like he was going to try and get up the... What have we got going on here? That's Schwann. Right. Oh, yes. Schwantz. And Schwantz was in that and somebody off in the grass there. Yeah, just rolling over uh, into the big car park down there. Oh. For Swansea, look at Harvey, like really working the bike. They're getting a little bit of a break too. Doohan's running away now from Arbe ever so slightly. And the Beatty all over the back of Catalora. Yeah, you see, unless Daryl gets paid, he's got to get past Catalora and Abby. Right, yes. Got Catalora, yes. Okay, good move, Dazza. So the sooner he can get past Abby, the better. So Beattie now, he's on the charge. Catalora sits in behind him. Beattie just sits up under brakes now. Wait till we see the gap. There it is. I'd be surprised if Luke can keep up any kind of pace because he's got a cracked bone in one of his fingers. He fell off right there, absolutely there. And um, cracked bone and very badly bruised and banged elbow. So around here, it's hard on your arms. You see a puff of dust there where somebody stuck their knee in the dirt. So if he can keep up the pace, I'd be very, very surprised. Yeah, it'd have to be sore. It was a big slap, wasn't it? He went up high and went bang, straight on the hard stuff. So that was late in the session uh, yesterday afternoon. So he would have had a lot of work last night, but it'd have to be sore. Yeah, I spoke to Alberto Poops, the Spaniard, this morning, and he's joined the little finger club and ground down his... Uh, the hole of the top of his little finger and he'll be struggling. He couldn't believe it yesterday. He sat on the wall just looking at where his finger was yeah. uh, in dismay. All right, let's come back to Mick Doohan now. He's starting to build the lead there. Coming in now on Arbe. Look at Daryl Beattie hounding and just getting up behind him and giving him a hard time. The 19-year-old got Beattie all over the back of him. He's reborn this year on the Suzuki. Looks terrific. Very fast through qualifying. Second only to Mick Doohan. Right, Here's the shot. What's the speed of this? Slipstream. Gotcha. Go, Dazza. Right. Listen to the crowd. Crowd go. Berserk. Australia 1 and 2. Right, it'll be interesting to watch on the brakes of the hairpin. See his... Oh, Dazza on the brakes. Brilliant. Just runs away Hot. from the kid now. Oh, very, very wide. He went in very fast there and ever so wide. But just managed to get it back in tight. Otherwise, Abby would have been up the inside. So Abby now sits back in third place. Daryl Beattie, you're looking at aboard the Suzuki, chasing Michael Doohan now. Starts to get a bit of a gap on the Japanese rider. Isn't it great to see Daryl Beattie back on a bike and being competitive? Well, you watch Dazza's head. When Daryl is really trying, you can call him Noddy because his head nods all over the show. It's, we were watching it on a monitor yesterday. His head just kind of nods like one of those little dogs in the back of a car. Swans has battled his way up to 10th spot, so oh. we know he's a fighter. Beatty's trying, he's on the gas, Beatty. He came over the top there, you saw him on the brakes, and he braked quite hard for that left-hand kick there, and he let the brakes off, and the thing leapt up in the air. That's uh, good. He's doing good, does it? Two and a half seconds, basically, back from doing Of course, they're the best of mates. Uh, Michael Doohan and Daryl Beatty, terrific mates. They fly uh, together, they... They boat together, and uh, now they're racing together. Catalore chasing now Arbe, but Arbe just keeping a, a bike or two in front of him. Back onto the main straight. Yeah, they may be. They're the best of mates, Mick and Daryl, but uh, I don't think Mick's going to wait around for Daryl. It's uh, be interesting to see what the gap is. OK, the gap between doing and Beach is 2.719, 2 and Daryl laps a, just a tenth of a second slower than Mick about that, so I give give you a sus next time round. We'll see how Beatty's doing, but he's going well, Beatty. Young Abe really dusting off Catalora through that part of the circuit very, very fast. You've got some nice camera work, terrific shots from our boys to show you just how uh, intense the battle is and how hard they work the machines. Wonderful pictures coming out of the creek. Caparossi in fifth place. That is really a very, very good result. He's in, he's in front of uh, Creville and Barros, Ito, 
coach, all of whom have ridden uh, 500s before. Yes. Big charge here from Catalora. Catalora. Yeah, they've all ridden 500s before, and little Caparossi has done an outstanding job. Really good. So Catalora fights back. He takes the Japanese star. What a nice move there. You see, the difference between Catalora and Abbey, well, it's quite a lot of differences, but um, the main thing being that Abbey will put everything into it in the first few laps. Oh, a bit of a back end slide there from Abbey. Yeah, the, the difference is, you see, Abbey's slowing up. He's just been passed by, I'm not quite sure if that's... I think it's right. it was... That's uh, Creville that's got passed him. Yeah, Abbey seems, I would say he might have um, a few problems. And right behind um, Abbey now is Barros. So Barros, first time he's, he's raced the Honda, so he's not he's doing a bad job. Caparossi dropping back, so uh, that's bad luck there as we look at Creville now. Alex Creville fighting his way through the field. We're only on lap six. Michael Dewan's out in front and doing it pretty nicely at the moment. Daryl Beattie, the other Australian rider, is back into second place. Catalora's on the move. Yeah, and um, Mick pulled out and a point six of a second that lap. And Dewan is the only one that's lapping in the 131 bracket. Point seven of a second faster, in actual fact. Creville has dropped Darby off slightly there now. Since he's got past him, he's probably put about two two lengths on him so uh, he's moving pretty quick too Arbe now under more pressure yeah uh, there's something wrong with Arbe's bike because it just doesn't uh, doesn't seem to be performing well he's getting absolutely smoked out of some of the corners um, you saw the way Catalora went past him earlier on uh, I would guarantee there's something up something up with it that's Barros that's chasing him at the moment new color scheme for him a lot of uh, Australians seeing these bikes and their new colours and riders and their new leathers for the first time. Takes a while to get used to. Wait. So Barris all over the Japanese youngster. Yeah, not only a new colour scheme, he's on a Honda this year and uh, after Suzuki's told him his services were no longer required and uh, thus far he's not going too bad actually but um, he's had factory bikes for a long time and never quite cut it. So whatever the Japanese rider was doing, he seems to have recovered from that. Arbe now down the straight. Barros going to tuck up on the inside of him. Can't get the, there, though. He gets chopped off as they go around that incredibly fast left-hander. Yeah, the Honda is certainly quicker than the Yamaha. The Honda is the fastest bike down the straight. And um, I'm sure Abby had some kind of problem. Swans back into eighth spot, so uh, he really is putting in a terrific ride. We haven't seen much of him. Made a dreadful start. Something happened on the line. He just got swamped, but he was back in 16th, 15th, 16th spot. He's now back up in the top 10, so he's doing a great job. He won't get in. The, he can't be in contention, I would oh, think. Oh, what I mean, out of that. Yeah, that was, out that of it, was exactly it? where Catalora passed Ooh. him. Doing's putting out half a second a lap, which can't be bad. Well, Michael's looked fantastic ever since uh, the bikes went on the track. He's been consistently the fastest, the smoothest, the most aggressive. He's just looked the business all weekend. Well, he's done in the final qualifying session. He was out the whole time, and all he was doing was running tyres, trying tyres the whole time. And um, it's all very well for people to go out and put two quick laps together, but um, Durham was out there putting seven and eight together at a time just to try the tyres. Did that yesterday, seven laps uh, around the 130 mark, and he just smoked everybody in your vernacular. He just killed them. Okay, there's the gap back now. One, two, three, and four. So he's got about half the length of the straight. Daryl Beattie is in second place. Now, have a look who's on the charge now. Creville, Creville. has gone past Catalora. Catalora. Ooh, big ride from Creville. Yeah, good ride from Creville. You know, he, he got to the stage where he, he started to look impressive again, Creville, and then kind of lost it. But if he carries on like this this year, then um, finally, we're gonna, I think he just fell off so many times, he, he just upset his confidence. Catalora would have to be hurting. Remember, he fell off hard yesterday, and uh, that would have to be on his mind. I suppose you try and lock it out, but uh, you can see here that chasing Creville now. The body's just stiff, Barry. Well, it is, you know, and also... Um, the other guys are on Michelin's, um, Catalora's on Dunlop's, and I, I feel really sorry for them because, uh, you know, after the thing in Kobe, they've been really struggling, and um, 
they can't do anything. You know, they're not in a position to be able to react as quickly as they need to because the facilities just aren't there to do it. Beautiful camera work from our guys today, just showing you just how big these machines are, just how brutal they are. Well, you just manhandle them, you wrestle them around, caressing the knees on the curves. I mean, just watch this, it's poetry in motion. They can bite you though, if you're careful. Well, they bite you hard, and they do it quickly. But there's nothing nicer than to see someone really riding one of these machines. No, they're great fun to ride. There's, uh, they are good, you know, when you get the hang of a 500, and it's the nicest of the lot to ride. You know, you get more satisfaction out of riding them. Caparos is now back down to seventh position. Just, he's only a second in front of Schwant. This is uh, the battle back here for uh, Treville and Catalora. Michael doing Daryl Beatty, doing a terrific job up front. Real ding-dong street fight going on here, though. Catalora hanging on the best way he can. As you can see, Creville just tucks it in. There's the knee goes down again. Brave these fellows, no doubt about it. Spectacularly fast. Watch the bike, the body language coming out of the bike as it shakes and wriggles its way out of the corners. Yeah, he's looking good now, Creville. He's, um, you see up there, it's both wheels sliding on the brakes. That's, um, that's good, good control. So, Michael Doohan leads the Australian Grand Prix. The first round of the World Championship will be back shortly. Stay with us. <laughs> Top six, Doohan, Beatty, Creville, Catalora, Barros, Arby. That's how they stand at the moment. You're looking at Daryl Beatty, the second place Australian bike. Number four, the Suzuki. Teammate of uh, Kevin Swans this year. New lease of life. He really is fired up. And at the moment, trialling his mate. Yeah, it's poor old Schwartz, he, got a, he doesn't get a lot of luck, does he? Whatever happened to the bike on the start line, I don't, well, it was as the, as the green light went, it looked like it jumped out of gear or maybe someone hit him or whatever, I don't know. You know but uh, to lose that amount of ground at the start is a struggle. Well, doing now, just doing it nicely out in front, as he would say, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Just building a, a lead, building a buffer. But in this sort of racing, believe you me, it's not finished till that checkered flag comes out. We've seen that already today. Yeah, that helmet, go back to the helmet, it, look, it looks, it's so nice. I think it's nicer, better looking than the other one. I know the old flag on it looks so keating, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty. It looks good. It does look good. Okay. <laughs> Graville now. <laughs> That's Catalora in behind him. So Graville now has really dropped Catalora off. Here come the pack. Yeah, who we got here? It's um, Barros, Abe, ah, Kevin up the inside. Up the inside look, of Abe. Oh, look at that! <laughs> he's a, a real. He's a, doesn't mind. He's up into six. He's taken ten places since the start. He's won <laughs> ten back. How good is he? It's incredible. If you didn't see us this morning, he lost it at the end of the straight and sat on his backside at like a, I reckon about 190 days an hour. No, the miles are nearly 290. Yeah, it was, yeah, nearly 290, you're right. That's Caparossi at the back there, just up the inside on the brakes. And that was where he went down as you go into that court. Oh, look at Abby, look at the, see the front suspension work in there. Yeah, so Swansea had a big slide at the end of the straight today as he went through that left hand and got up, shook himself, ran back and got some new letters. Everybody in pit lane slapped him. Everybody was slapping him on the back. This guy's so brave, jumped on the next bike, and he was the third fastest within a couple of laps of that session. I mean, you don't come any braver than that. Well, we saw what he did last year in the British Grand Prix. It's interesting, you see the back of that pack, 65, that's Loris Caparossi. Um, he's, he's doing a really commendable job, you know. He's, He's, he was saying that all I want to do is finish the race upright, get some points, and um, hopefully by the end of the year be on the podium. Kevin Swans, I think everyone's second favourite rider in this country. Gee whiz, he's got a huge following over here. You see a lot of his helmet colours on street bikes around the town too. You have a look at that helmet design, you'll see a lot of guys riding bikes wearing that design. He's got a big, big following here, and this is the last time, unfortunately, we'll see him in Australia. Oh, and look at him attacking Barros now. Oh, up the inside, Swansea. Go, Kevin, go. Oh, I love it when he lights it up like this. <laughs> He's good, isn't he? Yeah, there's hardly anybody better than on the brakes. Well, I don't think there is anybody better on the brakes. Fifth at the moment. 
Doohan's out in front, but you've got to ride with this man. He's had trouble since he really got on the track here on Friday, and he's just come back every time with a big effort. Still, still the two Australians out in front, Doohan and Beattie, but this is the Beattie's teammate, Kevin Swatch, bike 34. Always vowed that if he couldn't have one, he'll have 34. Well, that's it. You know, everybody knows him um, by having 34, and the only problem with one is you're going to have to give it back one day. Caparossi, too, has kept 65 right through his, uh, his Grand Prix. Well, I think it's a nice thing to do. You know, people get to know you by your number. Swans ran wide then, just going into the corner, maybe breaks a little bit late and trying to catch up as much as he can. He just ran wide, and I think Barris was going to get him back. Just to bring up the day with the leader, Doohan is lapping now in the 131s. I mean, he's just on fire, Michael Doohan, but Barris coming back here at Kevin Swans. Attacks him from the rear again. Swats loves this sort of cut and thrust. He thrives on this. Doohan's the only guy at all to get into the 131 bracket. The whole, the whole race has been in running 132s by everybody else, you know, and he's consistently 131, 131. Swats through there. You'd have to have your heart in your mouth after he came off today. That was a big, big accident. Just slipped down at enormous speed and bumped his way down uh, the same area where Mark Scape come and done in the Group A Winfield Commodore. So and I, it'd be about the same speed, too, yeah, I think. Exactly. But the lucky thing was he didn't hit anything. All he did was uh, slide along on his back. And then I was laughing at what you were saying everybody was coming up, patting him on the back. I yeah, that's the last, the last thing he wanted patting was his back. He held his arm up in the air while he's sliding, too, because he's still riding with a damaged wrist. He didn't want to damage that. The presence of mind when you're sliding, we can't understand that, how you can hold a hand up and do those sort of things. Well, you have to. The point about it is the natural reaction when you fall on the ground is stick your hands on the floor to slow, slow yourself down. But... As you stick your hands down, you put your, pick your hands straight up again because you remember that you're going to tear all the skin off them. And it's a natural reaction. If you fall down, you put your hands down. Can't take any closer to the action than that. You're almost riding the big Suzuki there with the Kevin Swatts Arbe in behind Barros. Terrific ding-dong battle going here. The big 500s. Barros in behind Swanson, and it's Arbe. I'm not quite sure who's behind Arbe. We'll pick that up for you. Yeah, it's Caparossi. Caparossi. So he's come up a bit now. He's working his way back through the field. Good to see him on a 500. Oh, absolutely. You know, he's he's that's good. You know, it's not easy to jump on a 500 and uh, go out and be mixing it with this lot. And I wouldn't be at all surprised uh, to see Caparossi get past uh, Abby and Barros, which will put him up in the first six. And if that happens, that's a good result for the first race. Riding with Swans as he comes around that incredible corner again. He's uh, He's got six seconds to catch up on Catalora, and he's doing it. So you're watching Swans here at his best. He's under pressure, and he's really fighting back. He would be so cranky about the start. He wanted to put a good ride in here for his last appearance at Eastern Creek. And I'll tell you what, it's been one of the great rides. Oh, he has. He's lapping half a second a lap quicker than Catalora. So there's, um, there's definitely enough laps to go. On lap 14 at the moment, Michael Doohan's out in front. Daryl Beatty in second place. We're watching Kevin Swans in action, the charger, it's the strange. aggressor. It's strange with Barros. I just don't understand what goes on with him because he blows hot and cold. One minute he's going quick, next minute he goes slow, like Swans is past. All of a sudden, Barros is staying with him, doing the same speed. And he's just upped his lap time, well, lowered his lap times by half a second away. That tight shot there gives you an idea of just how big these bikes are. Yeah, they're pretty big, but they're quite light for the size of them. You know, if you compare that to a big 750 road bike, um, it's much, much lighter. 15 laps to go on lap 16, so about half distance down. So Swans has got plenty of time to pull back Catalora. You can see Schwantz can see, will be able to see Cadillac at the end of the straight. So, um, you know, that gives you a good incentive. And it's nice and easy then, because you don't have to look at your pit board. You get, you've got your own info. You think, right, that's Cadillac at the end of the straight. I'm making a little bit of ground. That fires you up a bit more. And um, it's difficult for the guy that's getting caught. Michael Doohan out in front. Oh, oh. back end. Gee. That's tired, maybe getting just a little bit hot there. You saw him just get on the power there and the back end just step out a little bit and it seemed like quite a quick step out so you don't want that sort of thing would it be nice to see as he goes over the crest of the hill with a shot from the back here now watch coming out of this watch the back end of Dylan's bike mm, nice looking good because when it when the tire gets really starts to lose grip it was you know watch here watch there 
that's just the back you see back in just stepped out a little bit there a wild ride with michael doing he leads the grand prix we'll take a break stay with us Welcome back, wherever you're watching us right around Australia. It's a big day for us at the moment because we're one and two. Michael Doohan out in front, Daryl Beattie in second place. Alex Scoville is in third, then it's Catalora, then it's Swans, then it's Barros. And of course, the American-Australian domination has been happening for a long, long time. But when you look at it now, uh, the Americans, well, they're not there. It's the Australians at the moment. Well, it's the end of an era, you know, really, the only American out there. Um, apart from um, the fat one, is um, it's Kevin Schwantz, that's it. You know, and it really is the end of an era that started in the 76, and it's quite strange. Well, there's more Australians, two Australians leading it. I was just interesting looking. Um, just saw Doohan's bike step out a little bit, and um, I think you'll find Mick's gonna slow down a bit now, just to save his tires because uh, that obviously was the tyre just giving away a little, and he's dropped back into the 32s, and he's just, he's been, done four laps in 32, and now he's just dropped back down into the 31s again. So maybe Daryl was just catching a little bit, and he's got the sign so he can turn up the power again now. Riding smart though, because I mean, he's got the length of the straight lead basically. Um, so like he doesn't want to blow up from there, and he's just been so good all weekend. He's just been so quick. This is uh, Creville. Yeah, it's, you know, Mick will just use his head and um, watch his pit board. On his pit board, he'll be getting the, his um, plus eight or whatever it is on Daryl. And um, his, his plus eight also will be getting his lap time. So, um, you know, you just keep your lap times within the same sort of region. Well, we saw plenty of carnage in the 125s. Of course, half the field and the 250s were, were on the ground. But uh, all the 500 riders are still up and running. That's good. That makes a change, then, really, doesn't it? Because it's been quite carnage in practice. Um, there's been a lot of people um, down. Um, Barros went down, Caparossi went down, a bunch of the English flew. Oh, that's a nice slide. Still trying hard, Daryl Beatty now, second place. She looks different in these colours, but he looks good because he's in second and going good. He's been so relaxed. He looks so happy with his team. And, of course, he and Kevin Swans together, that'll be a fun garage to be around. They're both practical jokes. Oh, yeah, they are. They get on tremendously well. And uh, Kevin's doing everything he can to help Daryl, um, which is good. You know, if Daryl really keeps it all together this year, he, could, he will be Suzuki's number one. And that's a fantastic opportunity for him. Isn't that a wonderful uh, gesture, though, from Kevin Swans? I mean, there's plenty of blokes in this game that wouldn't help you. Oh, without any doubt. You know, the point is with Kevin, I've known Kevin for quite a few years, and uh, he's just a really nice guy. So Daryl Beattie, head down, tail up here at Eastern Creek, running second. He'd be happy, tailing up his mate by uh, around about eight seconds. Mick Dillon in front, but Daryl Beattie was quietly confident this morning. He said, there's one mistake, I'm ready to pounce. And I think he'd be pretty happy to be right where he is at the moment. Well, that's it. You have to keep the pressure up because uh, if you don't, if you think, oh, okay, right, I'm going to finish second anyway, until it gets to the stage that you really have an enormous gap. Okay, this is an enormous gap. If you still keep the pressure up, if Mick had any kind of problems, then Daryl would be there to pounce. Well, of course, they're great mates. So when they're at home on the Gold Coast together, they're flying helicopters together. They're either out in boats and running around on bikes they uh, are really are uh, really good mates they enjoy each, each other's company so it'll be an intensive season that all goes by the board when the flag drops of course well that's that's the great way to be you know you can you know, race against guys who are your best buddies but um, as soon as the old green light goes they could be your worst enemy lost five toes in fact the better part of a foot in a freak accident where his foot was involved in the chain and it just really massacred that foot up and uh, we saw him in Donington in England last year just a few weeks or a week after it happened and uh, his spirits were pretty low at that particular time and uh, he's fought out of all of that he's got himself back fit again on a new team on a new bike and boy oh boy he's really delivering what we knew the goods that he always had but couldn't deliver them yeah, that's a fact. You'd have to feel sorry for him last year. Creville's really turning the wick up now because he's lapping quicker than uh, than Beatty. He's pulled back three tenths of a second on Beatty there, and the gap is down to just over four seconds. So we we'll keep our eye on that because um, 
You can't afford to let Creville get up on him. Two's running back in seven there. Lost half a little finger yesterday. Virtually ground off in a sliding crash that he had during the uh, qualifying session. And I, I just, I'll never forget the shot of him sitting on the wall looking at the, the bit that was missing and saying to the guy, what are you going to do with it? And all they could do was bandage it. Uh. It's quite amazing. But here he is riding. How tough are they? You lose half a finger. That was yesterday. Today it's Grand Prix time. You ride again. Tell you, this is good performance. Loris Reggiani on the little uh, twin cylinder 400. Uh, Aprilia's in 10th place. And he's one place in front of Ito on a factory Honda. Which... That Aprilia, I'm told, from reliable sources, is being groomed and hope, hopefully developed for Biaggi. Yes, I'm sure you're quite right. Reggiani, he's a really experienced guy. You know, race for donkey's years, and he's the best bloke to, to uh, set up that bike. And then Biaggi, as you say, I'm sure I'm sure you're right, doesn't he? Go on. Look at this. Watch the champ in action. He is so good to watch. When he's on it, oh. I'll tell you what it's like an orchestra. <laughs> oh, this is going to be funny. Coming up against the back markers now. You know, we'll see how many waves the back markers get. He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> tolerate them for too long. Well, it depends how much they're getting, getting his way. He's got 10 seconds lead now. So um, he, he'll know, obviously, he's, that he's got 10 seconds. So I'm sure he'll be gentle with him. He's got enough air. That's like a good service. Yeah, he's trying to round them up at the right spot to get them all in one go. Well, you have to be careful, you see, because you can rush up the inside of this lot down here. Now watch, you've got to be real careful because they're having their little private race and they can stuff it right in on your front wheel and you've had it, there's nothing you can do about it. So as Michael doing, White winds his way through the pack and hustles and muscles his way through. We'll take a break, come back, nine laps to go. Welcome back, nice to have your company. Or if you're watching us from the top end or the western end and the southern end, the eastern end of Australia. You're looking at Kevin Swans. He's fighting his way back. He was 16th. He's now well up onto the leaderboard there. It's doing Beatty Creville, Catalora, Swans, and Barros. We're trying to get a time behind Catalora. That's who he's chasing. However, Barros has had a new lease of life. He's come back at Swans. So they're having a, a private battle. Around about six seconds in behind Catalora. So if he can shake Barros, he's a chance of catching him. Yeah, it's, and I'm just looking. Just coming up behind Barros is uh, Alberto Pooch. You might see just there, the guy in the red, that's Pooch. So um, with any kind of luck for Pooch, you'll be able to get past Barros. Well, seven laps to go for Swan, so he's really got to pick him up at over a second a lap. There's Pooch there, new colours for him. Remember, blue and white last year, very distinctive, very, very fast. Had a problem with his arms, that he couldn't hold uh, the bike for long periods of time. He's had an operation oh, to fix that. back end of Pooch's things. Yeah, he had the operation and... Uh, I, uh, he said, unfortunately, I'm not going to really know whether it's going to work today because my finger hurts so much. But um, <laughs> I'm sure he's getting a rough idea. Yeah, he looks, uh, he's been very, very quick in practice coming to grips with uh, the new organisation he's got. But he was a big improver last year and toward the end of the season, very, very fast. Spanish rider push. Must be unbelievable to arrive with a finger that's just got ground off. I mean, we know how tough footballers are, but I tell you what, tell me anyone that's tougher than these fellas. The thing about it is, as long as it doesn't impair you sort of doing your job, the second you start racing, you forget about it. You know, it's only if, if you've got a bad foot or something like that where you can't change gear or you can't break, um, then it, it's all suddenly running wide there. Um, then it uh, gives you a problem, but uh, that's Mark Garcia, French guy, 44. It's amazing how the old adrenaline um, takes away the pain. Mixed leading by 11 and a half seconds. Yeah, that lead's been sort of fluctuating from 8, 9, 10, 11 seconds. I think you're right. He's just backing it off when he thinks he can save his tyres. Wouldn't want to do anything silly now. He's got uh, Daryl Biddy pretty well covered. He's still right with Poos here at the moment around Eastern Creek. Terrific camera work, fellas. Just great shots. I mean, you can't get any closer to the action than that. We're on the bo on board the bike with him. <laughs> Swanson Barros, they're still at it. See, <laughs> Barros is really holding Swansea up because he's got to ride defensively all the time. I'd love to see him get a crack at uh, Catalora. Look at Barros. You're right, you know. He, he drops off and then he comes back at him again. It's really strange when he rode the Suzuki, he did the same thing to Kajiba. He'd go like a rat up a drain pipe one weekend, um, be like a wet flannel the next, and really, he's um, quite 
quite strange. Swan's back on the main straight now. Tucks down low. They call him the tall Texan. I mean, none of these fellas are really tall, but he's taller than most. Barros comes in with him. Catalora, Swans, Barros, Fuge, and of course Dewan, Vidi, Creville. Creville's had a good ride. He's still up in third place. Started a bit back. He uh, lost some ground, but he fought his way through with some nice riding. Traffic here for Swans. He doesn't want to know about it. Barros goes a little bit wider. James Hayden, it is. Yeah, it's in uh, front gone. of him. There he is, bike 69. Swans goes through, Barros goes through. See, look at, look at Barros now. He's trying to stick it up. He's, he's, <laughs> just cannot understand him. Blue flags waving everywhere. Swans probably got the better of that deal now because Fouge closes up on Barros. So uh, he's got his own war going on now from behind. Yeah, I think Fouge will get Barros. He's, uh, he's caught him up quite a long way. And um, even though sort of... Uh, Kevin's lit the fire of Barros again. I'm sure that some um, food should get him. Four laps remaining in this, the 500cc Grand Prix of Australia. First round of the World Championship. Michael Dewan striving to get back-to-back -back championships. First round, and uh, he looks good at the moment. I want to put the mocker on him. Nearly 13 seconds in front now. Mick is in front of BT. So battle back in the pack, probably the real race that's happening at the moment. As you can see, Swans, Barros, Pooj, evenly spaced. Let's have a look down the end of the straight as they go. Michael Dewan out in front. A while since we've seen him, but still looking very, very smooth. Coming up behind Bossard here. No problem. Just does it easy. Nice line, swings the bike past him. And he would really enjoy this. You know, I know he said many a time, you know, I want to win the Australian Grand Prix. I'm not going to sort of go and do anything silly. I've got a long season in front of me, but he really does want to win it. To win your own well, Grand Prix. That's it. You know, there's nothing nicer. There's nothing nicer. Won it in 1992 aboard a Honda. And here he is in front again. But still four laps to go. And he's still lapping just under half a second quicker than Daryl. He just looks so good on the bike now. He looks, he's just so much part of it, isn't he? But he is, you know, the, the whole weekend he's look, really looked the business and um, happy and had it all together. You know, he's, uh, oh, nice. Like, I, what I want to see is the last couple of laps round from the back as you come over the crest of that hill with that left hander. Because if he's enjoying himself, he'll be giving us some nice slides in the last couple of laps. And no one does it better than him. Uh, he can use the rear of that bike. Over the hill. Look at the attitude of the thing. Oh. Terrific angles, aren't they? I mean, for people who have never ridden a motorcycle, let alone a race bike, I mean, just to watch somebody do this, the way that he does it to me is it's stunning. Well, it's funny if you stand a bike in the garage and right, this is my favourite bit. Now from the back here, watch and see. Not so much that level. Last lap, I guarantee you, do. Mind you, after what happened in the French Grand Prix, he nearly threw himself <laughs> off doing that, having fun as he goes. Yeah. Bike doesn't seem to be leaping in the air as much this year under acceleration, is it? Hey, it's nice. It looks certain the uh, Hondas really listened to Mick over the over the uh, winter. They didn't, you know, they just refined it little bits here and there, and um, it's you know that's the best thing you can do. You know, just cure any little problems you had, and that's what they've done. Sports Sunday follows this race, of course, and you'll see a really nice piece on Michael doing a look back and a look at, at what he went through. There's no more courageous sportsman in Australia than this fellow. Uh, when I first saw his leg in South Africa, I mean, you thought he's got to lose that leg. It was just a mess. And to have the courage to ride as he did uh, that day at Kyle Army and uh, the things that he's done since and the effort that he's had to put in in the off-season just to keep on the bike, just to keep walking. I mean, nobody can deny this man's success. I totally agree with you. People just really do not appreciate what he's been through. It really is horrific.
Daryl Beattie, second place. You know, he's hard to be jumping around too. I mean, he'd be so happy. First time out with a new team, second place in behind another Australian. Gee whiz, it's a, it's a great time. Well, this is Australians uh, first and second, of course, at the Australian Grand Prix in 1990, it was Gardner and Doohan. So it's, uh, it's nice to see it all happening again. Greville in third place. We haven't seen much of him, but it has been a good ride. Beatty throwing the Suzuki around, counting down the laps. I tell you what, there'll be some smiles on the podium. <laughs> The crowd here will absolutely go mad. Go bananas. Quite rightly so. It's great. You know, it's really good for Daryl to get a good ride. See the bike working, shaking. You can see they're just brutal machines, aren't they? I think they're nice, actually. <laughs> just watch them work. They are brutal. Back onto the straight again. Hucks down low, gets maximum speed out of the bike. Knows he really can't catch Michael doing from there. <laughs> if he Last can, lap. If he can, 13 seconds in one lap would be really good, wouldn't it? <laughs> but he's still tucked down, still keeping the concentration going. That's what I'm talking about. Even though he's second place, as you said before, if you if you start to relax, that's when things go oh, wrong. That's when it for sure. So he's still in the, both Mick and him are lapping roughly the same speed now and uh, still in the 132 bracket. Watch Michael doing this is the final lap. He would be just enjoying every second of this. He's been the one to beat since they come to the creek. Right. Now, give us a good show from the back here. Yeah, maybe yes or no. Yes. Oh, 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 thank you. See the rubbery <laughs> left. He's having a good time. <laughs> the eyes of a champion there and see him work the bike. Now the front wheel starts to come up. He's playing now. Maybe he'll go for just don't play too hard. Maybe he'll go for the longest wheeling. I don't know. Let's have a look so you can get it up early. Sliding it, working it. Crowd Listen to the, the crowd. The crowd stood up in front of us now. The whole grandstand has stood up. Up on the he back. Comes no, 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 no. Look at that. Up on the yeah. back wheel. Two flags out. Doohan yeah. takes it. Doohan wins it. The Australian gets it. Yeah. Oh, you beauty. The, the Australian crowd go up here. Everybody goes up. He's so popular, Michael Doohan. What a great win. That's the quest for championship number two. Daryl Beatty, the other Australian, comes over. He gets equally as big a cheer as he flashes across the line in second place. Here, Daryl Beatty round the bottom. Alex Creville comes in third place. Good ride from Creville. Solid ride. Look at Mick, though. He's saying, give me a flag. Look at the sign language going on here. Mick Dillon, you can hear the crowd for yourself. They run out. He's trying to get a flag. He got a big one. Good, well done. The crowd have gone out, given him the flag. And what a proud moment for Michael Dillon. The Australian flag, crowds out there waiting for him. There he goes. It's not an easy thing to ride one of these things and hold it, let me tell you. But now he, he feels no pain. It's all elation now. Teammate comes up beside him, Creville. Good ride. Daryl Beatty there. There's the Italian flag. But it's Australia's day today. Terrific performance from Mick Doohan. As I said before, nobody could deny this man's success. He's as hard and as tough as they come. And boy, oh boy, has he paid his dues. Here is the wheel going up. Not a bad wheelie. Not a bad wheelie. Look at that. <laughs> Don't you just love it? Down it comes. A bit of a shudder and over the line to take first place. There it is. The punch of the air. I've done it. And that's the start of championship number two. Two Australians side by side. What a sight. Haven't seen it since Philip.